this is the first in a series of videos uh, to discuss the, uh, the capabilities and how to use the Shipper Driven Traffic Simulator or STS software. What exactly is it? It's a set of computer programs that solve the freight car forwarding problem that we, uh, we quite often have on the, in the model railroad world. It's very similar to traditional car cards and way bill systems, but it's e much easier to use and you have to worry about dropping the, the deck of cards. It can generate uh, switch lists and waybills, and you can either print them or just view them online. And because it's a real-time system, everybody on the system, all the operators, can uh, see where the car is at any given time, if they're in trains or where they're located, what their status is. Best of all, it's free to use, modify, give away, because it's licensed as open source. Looking at the diagram on the left, we can see the life cycle of a shipment. Some of those boxes are performed by uh, the railroad operators and some by customers. We call STS shipper driven because it simulates the shippers ordering cars for loading and it also simulates the loading and unloading or I should say the initialization of the loading and unloading operations. Humans still have to assign cars to the shippers car orders and they still have to confirm that the cars are loaded and or unloaded. Uh, how is it similar to a traditional car card waybill system? It works the same way as the two-sided waybill does. Uh, you have to assign cars to fill car orders. That's the same as putting a waybill into a car card pocket. You have to confirm that the cars are loaded. That's just like flipping the two-sided waybill. And you have to confirm that the cars have been unloaded. That's like pulling the waybill and then uh, sending the car on to its, uh, when empty, return to location. So how does uh, STS differ from the traditional car card waybill system? Well, first of all, all the information that's on those uh, pieces of paper is now available online by mobile devices and computers. Uh, you no longer need to carry these decks of cards around. Uh, you can if you wish, but it's not required. It's a multi-user system, so all the operators can view the status and location of all the cars at any given time. And also because the computer can uh, use a, a random number generator, it can be used to put a little unpredictability into the system, which is something that's kind of hard to do uh, if you're just using traditional car cards. Yes, you can shuffle them and, uh, and shuffle the waybills and add them uh, to the car cards kind of randomly, but if you're doing this as a, a single user, or I mean, a single operator, uh, railroad, or maybe with a friend of yours, it gets a little uh, hard after a while to constantly change things. You can, because of the computer's random number generators, it can do that and give you a little bit of a challenge from time to time. So how does STS differ from other computerized switch lists and car forwarding systems? Well, first of all, it only does basically three things that are related to car forwarding. It simulates the customers that are ordering the cars. It simulates a customer starting to unload, correction, to load the car. And it simulates a customer starting to unload the car. Humans still have to complete those last two tasks. Uh, what STS does not have in common with other computerized uh, switchless and car forwarding systems is that it does not assign cars to trains. Humans have to do that. It does not assume a car was set out where it was supposed to be. Humans have to tell STS where the cars were set out. Just like you have to put the car card and waybill into the little wooden pocket on the side of the fascia. STS doesn't know anything about the length of tracks or capacity of tracks. Uh, it certainly has nothing to do with timetables, schedules, and so on. Uh, so humans have to take care of these. If you have a train that's too long for a passing sighting, uh, STS is not involved in that, and you have to solve that challenge yourself. So what do you need to do to make use of STS? Well, first of all, you need a fairly modern computer, Windows 10, Apple's OS 10, uh, any Linux system. You need a copy of the software. There's two versions, one for Windows and one for Linux-based uh, PC, such as the Raspberry Pi, which also works on Apple. And then you have this information that you need to uh, set up the shippers, commodities, car data, and so on. If you have, presently have a car card and waybill system, you already have that information. And lastly, in order to make use of the multi-user capability, you need a local area network, which any home Wi-Fi uh, network will work just fine for that. Don't worry if you're not a computer geek. STS has a very simple user interface. It's a, just a basic web page, black and white. If you have reasonable computer skills, uh, if you work 
with windows for any period of time, these are the six things you need to know how to do. Uh, if you're working on a Linux or a Mac, uh, you'll have to have a few more skills than that, but uh, for, your, for most Windows machines, this will be fine. If you want to give it a try, go out to www.new-alm.us. That's a dash, not an underline. Look in the project section and then uh, click on the STS link. You'll see a diagram uh, pop up on your screen, similar to the one on the right. Once you do that, read the Read Me First document first. That's why it's called the Read Me First document. Uh, when you've downloaded and installed it, and the installation uh, instructions for Windows and Linux and Mac are different, but once you've downloaded and installed it and got it running, this is the STS homepage. This is what you'll see. On the left-hand side, you have the simulation operations. That's where you uh, generate car orders, fill car orders, make switch lists, uh, pick up cars, set out cars, and load and unload cars. The center column is the reports. That's where you can view your switch lists and waybills, and a lot of other reports besides that. And finally on the right are the database maintenance operations. That's where we'll go to set up the database when we get into the next few videos. So in order to do that, um, here's, this is the information you're going to need. As I said, if you have, already have a car card waybill system you, uh, or even other uh, computerized uh, car forwarding systems, you have this info. Uh, commodities, car codes, and so on. We'll enter those into the database, and once we get done uh, entering them, we're going to make use of a couple of the uh, utility uh, functions down the bottom, specifically the one that uh, does a backup copy, because once we uh, go through the, the entering all this data, which is a one-time thing, once we go through that uh, work, we want to make sure we have a good backup copy.